<laughs> Let's talk trash. <laughs> Control, alt, delete. Boy, what if we could do that with some of our more, the uglier, nastier problems? No, I'm not talking about a boss or an in-law. I'm talking about garbage. Now, before anyone thinks this is a, another recycling talk, it is not. In fact, I'm talking about the stuff that you and I throw away every day that's not recyclable. See this pen? It's not garbage, but it used to be. The same for th these materials, and there's plenty of others that, that are outside that have been made from previously unusable waste material or garbage that was going to a landfill. In fact, yes, even that guitar bass. In fact, that blue box is a 3D printer filament, and it is even called land filament. <laughs> now, I get it. I know that garbage is the least glamorous topic of the day, but it, it's as common to all of us as air and water. Everybody makes it. It's universal. It's made in every town, every country, every culture. It knows no boundaries. And, and the solutions that we have for today are just unsustainable and inadequate. How? Well, our solutions are landfills, incineration, and recycling. Well, landfills, we're filling landfill space faster than it's being built. And the landfill permitting process is, is difficult and oftentimes impossible. Not in my backyard <laughs> is the first cry against any new landfill proposal. And so just building more and more landfills is not a solution and it's not sustainable. Incinerators, they're only viable for large populations with large waste streams. So even if you view them as acceptable, they're not a solution for the vast, for the vast part of this country. Well, Johnny, you mentioned recycling. Surely that's, that's got to be the solution. We just need to get better recycling rates, better participation. Well... After decades of educating and promotions and programs and coaxing and even some mild arm twisting, the recycling rate for the United States is only 34%. And 9% of that is, is composting. So you see the recycling logo is a triangle, a closed loop triangle. But at 34%, we're only closing in one side of that triangle. Now, that's really not the worst of it. <laughs> the amount of waste still going to landfills has not decreased since 1980. This EPA slide, the bottom part, that bottom gray area, shows the amount of waste going to landfills. And the amount going to, to those landfills, in spite of our recycling, has not decreased, has still remained the same for four decades. So... Still, for most of us, we put our garbage out every week and it just goes away. Well, welcome to away. <laughs> <laughs> for most garbage in the United, the United States, away, the final resting place is a landfill. These places can be ugly, stinky, smelly, yucky, drippy. <laughs> and on top of that, they give off a tremendous amount of greenhouse gases. So they have the potential to pollute the, the, the atmosphere, the air we breathe, the groundwater, and the site they're situated on is rendered useless for generations, maybe permanently. Now, I've been in the waste business for, well, since I had black hair. <laughs> and I have actually designed, built, and constructed these malodorous places called landfills. And in that time of, of that process, I have been able to see firsthand that we're still throwing good stuff away after recycling, material that has a lot more life, more use, more value, more energy, more usefulness. My father was from the Depression generation, and he hardly ever threw anything away. God bless him. <laughs> And, and, but I heard from him all the time, Johnny, it still has more use in it. You can use that for something else. And my grandfather continually said, Johnny, make the best use of what you have. So I'm here today from, as someone from inside the waste business who has seen firsthand that we need better solutions and that there has to be something better to do with garbage besides contaminate the earth and pollute our environment. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah.
That was a good place for an amen. Um, <laughs> now, I didn't come here to discourage you today. I actually came to encourage you. So let's talk about a couple of solutions. 18 years ago, in an effort to clean up an old landfill, we, we began a landfill reclamation project. It was the first of its kind in Georgia, and the goal was to remove the waste, pull out recyclables, reclaim the dirt, and then take the residual waste and put it on to a new, into a new subtitled state-of-the-art landfill. In that process, that landfill's life expectancy or the useful life of that landfill was extended to over 100 years. But more importantly than that, the groundwater, which was contaminated at that site, was cleaned up to U.S. drinking water standards. And that groundwater has stayed clean to this day. But during that landfill reclamation process, we saw something interesting as we dug down deeper and deeper all the way to the bottom of the landfill. Yes, I've been at the bottom of a landfill. As we got to the bottom of the landfill, we saw that there was virtually no degradation of the, of the garbage except for food waste. Cardboard, plastic, paper, wood, even envelopes were still in a condition very similar to the day that they were discarded. And although it looked like a big pile of garbage to most people, we saw a huge reservoir of materials and energy. If, if only we had a way to use it. You see, landfill reclamation was a good first step. But that garbage kept coming into that landfill day after day, and it still wasn't being put to good use, nor did we have a way to utilize all of that wonderful material we had just reclaimed. Yes, I just called garbage a wonderful material. So let's look at a techno technological solution. When garbage or waste material is ground up or shredded to a cornflake sized material and the, and the metal is removed to be recycled, that material is converted to what's called a, a dry fuel, a RDF, refuse derived fuel. That took a lot of thought, didn't it? <laughs> refuse derived fuel. Now that fuel when cooked in large electric ovens at high temperatures above 1000 degrees, uh, and with the oxygen restricted, what happens is that fuel carbonizes and it gives off two streams. It gives off a, useful, uh, a gas stream and it leaves a resultant carbon that looks very similar to charcoal. Now, the gas stream is a very high, uh, it's a high heat gas stream. It's very similar in heat content to natural gas. So it has many, many uses. It can be used as an industrial heat source. It can be used to make steam, to, to drive a turbine, to make electricity, to put electricity back on the grid. It can be used to make power for that site's own internal use. And it can even be distilled down into uh, liquid fuel additives used every day in the transportation industry. In fact, that's what's in that mason jar that you see on the screen is a liquid fuel additive, not my grandfather's spirits. <laughs> now, now, the other product is the carbon char. And, and there's, there, are two, there are two uses that we found already for it. First, it can be steam activated to create a porous absorbent carbon which is very useful for air filtration, water filtration, wastewater cleanup, industrial emissions control, and many, many other industrial uses. The second use for that char can be used as a, as a blending material to make pellets for the plastics industry. Now, when you take that char and blend it with a traditional petroleum-based pellet, you use less petroleum. So petroleum is saved, and that pellet is now partly renewable. But better still, when that char is blended with a plant-based material, you now can create a totally 100% renewable pellet still usable in the plastics industry. These are some examples of the materials that just some of the materials that have been made utilizing the gas and the char. Now, a few facts about carbonization. It takes less than 10 minutes to extract the, or liberate the gas and turn the RDF to char. There's no exhaust to the atmosphere, so all of the gas can be captured and utilized. There's no flame or, or combustion. And, the, and, and 
this technology can utilize any, any garbage that's currently going to a landfill. But even better, it's really excellent for the waste stream after recycling. So it is not an impediment to recycling. It's actually an enhancement. So what's the result? All of that waste now that's put through this system is used to either make gas, energy, or, 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 or carbon char. All of that waste now no longer needs to be buried in a landfill. And all of that waste now will no longer give off greenhouse gases because it's been cooked at over 1,000 degrees. And finally, the, uh, that waste can just be, be utilized in more purposes. I think there's more to come. So what's the result? The result is that our lives are going to change as technology overtakes this industry. The result is that we can now utilize waste. Carbon, excuse me, garbage no longer needs to be contaminating. It no longer needs to contaminate because it can be sterilized so it doesn't contaminate our air and our groundwater. Waste doesn't have to be wasted. We can use it to make renewable energy and renewable products. It means that that we can keep on recycling, but now that recycling triangle can be completed into a closed loop of a circular economy of raw materials, no, of waste materials being put back into the economy and put back into good use. And finally, <laughs> that mythical unicorn of zero waste can now be a reality. And landfills can go the way of the dinosaur. And maybe one day your children or grandchildren will say to you, where does our garbage go? And you can say, it's going away, but not to a landfill. It's going to another place to be upcycled, for, to be reused for a better purpose. Because you see, it used to be garbage, but not anymore. And then maybe they will ask you, but what was a landfill? <laughs> Thank you very much.